सब्सक्राइब टू आर चैनल प्रेस द बेल आइकन एंड नेवर मिस एन अपडेट फ्रॉम लेटेस्टली क्या ये इंटरव्यू हम हिंदी में करें नहीं 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 पर दोबारा मैं पूछना क्रिकेट इज अ गेम दैट इज प्लेड बिटवीन टू टीम्स बट देयर इज अ थर्ड टीम ऑन द फील्ड व्हिच जनरली गोस अननोटिस्ड and now with me today i have someone who's represented that third team with great distinction and dignity for a long time 74 test matches 174 odis and 34 t20 internationals simon toffel thank you for joining me on Wonderful latest league thank and you very much we are talking about this finding, finding the gaps yes yeah, that's the book yeah that's about finding the gaps that's right now abhi humne suna hai ki ye che bhashaen bolte hindi bhi bol lete kya ye interview hum hindi mein kare nahi 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 but the bar mein puchna Okay I think that's the line of the interview anyway Simon <laughs> jokes apart uh, chalo talking about your book now it's hit the stands I've had the pleasure of reading it can you reflect a little bit on the book your umpiring career and the fact that you left at a relatively young age 41 Yeah I did well look the book was a, an amazing project in itself it was a real challenge trying to get down a lot of my thoughts and messages and reflections around my career and about some of the things that I'd learned along the way but I really wanted to try and have an opportunity to have a conversation with as many people as possible and writing a book is an is an opportunity to do that to share messages to share learnings not everything went according to plan not everything worked so a lot about experience is about making mistakes and the best in the world make the fewest amounts of mistakes but it's our attitude to making mistakes that was also reflected in the book i don't take credit for writing and getting everything right i had about four or five people around me who would reread my chapters who would give me some constructive feedback give me suggestions to improve it but it was a great journey a great experience there's a lot of life life skill lessons in there and a lot of human interest stories things that worked on the field things that worked not well on the field moments of terror moments of excitement and in the book I also cover the fact your question about why I left at age 41 you know and there's a chapter in there called use by date and I'm a big believer that everyone's got to use by date so it's something that I would thoroughly recommend to mums and dads uh kids who are growing up going to school people professionals who want to get better at what they do and make sure that they just achieve their potential and unlock it Simon there are so many examples in this book and there was one that caught my eye that was umpires pre- preparing for a big game and you spoke about the india pakistan game at mohali in 2011 and then you came down to mumbai and played the uh, uh, rather empire the final not too far from here no, at one no, day right in mumbai yeah. yeah were those the toughest days of your career for world class performers regardless of what you do world class preparation needs to be excellent then you talked sort of touched on coping with pressure and how do we cope with some of that external pressure and in the book i talk about pressure only exists when you care what other people think so how do we focus on what we have to do and really keep it simple all i've got to do is watch the ball all i've got to do is focus on my game but also how do i focus on team success because as you said in the introduction we are the third team and we need to be successful and when we are successful no one notices us now i wanted to ask you this question especially with the drs and everything if say you get it wrong on the field and then you've got to do this oh, it's a terrible feeling yes. yeah how bad is that feeling well uh, look everybody handles that setback a little bit differently and and there's a chapter in my book called bounce back ability and i talk about my worst game and i talk about those feelings of getting that decision wrong and then what you do next and how you sort of get over that sense of guilt uh, i also call it a sense of grief and that loss of pride and that loss of well i can't really have a good game now i you know i was almost like i can't have a perfect game i can't have a great game where do i go to from here and and it really is a matter of trying to turn that emotional response because we're all people how do we turn that emotional response into something more rational okay so i've had a mistake things haven't gone according to plan what do i do now how do i focus on that next delivery how do i get that next decision right how do i want that next decision to come to me and not try to find a hole to to dive into because the players the batsmen when they have a, a mistake and they get out they get to throw their bat inside the dressing room they get to sulk they get to go through all those human emotions as a cricket umpire you're out there on the field there's no place to hide you can't escape that you've got to deal with it then and there and try to move on as quickly as you can because the one thing that's actually worse than making a mistake it's making two
we, we never want to go there. And you also spoke about Virat Kohli, whom you've seen grow into the individual that he is. In terms of being a leader, what do you think is a standout point? Is it the fact that he leads by example or someone who encourages his players to be the best that they can be? All of the above. So within that leadership section, I really talk about leading from the front, leading from behind, servant-based leadership. And look, there's a lot of theories out there about what good leadership is and lots of different examples. But where I've come from in the game of cricket and what I've seen work the best, and if we're talking about sustainable success through leadership, it's about having that ability to adapt your leadership style to the situation. So sometimes you need to lead from the front, and we've seen that with some of our players, whether that's a, a Rahul Dravid, the wall, you know, leading from the front and holding up an end, or whether that's leading from behind, and I've seen that with a Steve Waugh who actually encourages his player and shows tremendous faith in his players to lift and to, to stand up and put their hand up and really give the performance that's required. Or if I look at servant-based leadership, and this is where I look at a Mahala J. Wardner particularly, who, when his team wins, he gives credit to his team. When his team loses, he takes responsibility for what's not working. And I think that's a tremendous way of serving the people that you lead. And in the book, I talk about how you build trust with your people. And I go into those sorts of elements of how will people follow you as a leader? What are they looking for? And how do you build trust with them? Because if you build trust with your people, they will follow you simply out of curiosity or because you're heading in a direction that they also believe in. So the book's really important about that. I talk about Mark Taylor, you know, and, and how good leaders don't actually think about themselves. They think about serving the cause. And if the cause is about winning a match of cricket, how do we do that in a way that doesn't put ourselves front and centre? And, and there's a great example in the book of Mark Taylor's leadership. It's been, what, now seven years since you left international cricket. And how has life been after leaving the field? And how much do you miss it? Well, I left, I left international cricket pursuing um, something more that I was passionate about, which was coaching, training, mentoring and helping other people be successful. So I spent four years after the, my umpiring career still helping the international umpiring community. I've reconnected more with my family. I've tried to be more available for them. I've given space to my wife to now have a career. I've given time to my kids to be able to support them through their development. So really, there's always opportunities. Uh, recently, I was in the Caribbean for the CPL as a match referee. So six weeks in the West Indies helping that tournament. Was, the big boss. Well, well <laughs> <laughs> a boss. Yeah. But it was, it was fascinating to, to lead an umpiring team for for 19 matches and hopefully add some value there. And yeah, I, who knows where the future's gonna take me, but I really am enjoying the opportunities that the wonderful game of cricket presents. You've been umpiring, you've umpired rather in many great games. I'm gonna end this right here by just putting in a bit of a spot. You've been to the World T20 2007 final when India got through Pakistan. Yeah, and the Yuvraj yeah. Singh six sixes. Yuvraj yeah. Singh six sixes. Sri Lanka, West Indies, World T20 Final 2012, yep. India, Sri Lanka Final right here in 1K Day and many other games. Which one would you pick as your most memorable game? And just that you being there and you felt, wow, I'm here and this is what I was supposed to do. It's very hard to go past that semi-final between India and Pakistan and Mahali 2011. It just seemed to have everything. You know, it was an ICC event. It was a celebration of cricket. It was tribal in terms of you know, two competing teams really feeling passionate about winning. You felt that, that, uh, that emotion from both the countries. You knew that it was an important game. Uh, the umpiring team performed really well on the day and, and as a unit, and it was a celebration of the game. You know, and then we sort of then went into our second final. I call it the second final, which was the final. And uh, the feeling of emotion in the streets and you know, how the people responded to the, to the result and the passion, enthusiasm and vibrancy of, of India coming together. And that's what's great about the game of cricket as it brings people together across different religions, different cultures, different age groups. And it becomes the one language that, that unites us all. And I really would encourage people to continue to love the game, continue to look at how it builds relationships between people and countries and continue to grow it. Simon, thank you so much for joining us and wishing you the very best. Thank you.